hidden to the world in retirement, indicating he will not have a public role once his resignation takes effect February 28th. Joining me now, Kate Childs Graham, columnist for the Young Voices series at the National Catholic Reporter and an activist in the progressive Catholic movement. Good morning. Good morning. After learning of the Pope's decision to resign, you actually sat down, you spoke with a group of young progressive Catholics. If there was a kind of overriding theme to their thoughts, what was it? I think what we're looking for is a Pope who's a good listener. There's clearly a consensus in the pews about issues like transparency, accountability, women's equality, and LGBT equality, and we need a Pope that's listening to that. When you say that transparency is a key issue to the next pope, what do you think that this pope hasn't done, or even Pope John Paul II, you know, that could change that perception? Sure. I mean, I think that this pope certainly ha has had a papacy kind of plagued with scandal and division. He even spoke to that on Ash Wednesday. He said um, he spoke about the divisions in our church, and I think that was a clear signal to the next pope that that their key task is going to be healing those divisions, and that certainly is going to come with um, some transparency, more transparency, and certainly transformation in our church. A sister Louise Akers is, is a member of the Sisters of Charity, and, yeah. and she was on the program yesterday mm -hmm. here on Jansing and Company, and here's what she had to say about women in the church? I think the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, is probably one of the last bastions of sexism. And so in whatever ways that can be rectified, I think there's a growing resistance to the status quo today and a growing movement to suggest changes. Sister Akers went on to say that women in the priesthood could be one possible solution. Absolutely. And I'm wondering what your reaction is to those comments. Absolutely. I think women in the priesthood is one component um, uh, of, of the transformation we need to see. Um, but we can't just add women and stir, right? We need to uh, fully transform our church, look at those policies and practices that we have that are great and keep them and lift them up and change those that just aren't working. And, and women's inequality in the church isn't working for many Catholics. There has been a lot of talk about the church and modernization, although to be fair, yeah. the conversations that we're having right now are the same conversations that we had when Pope John Paul II was ill and then when the next conflict came to be. But, but are there other areas, not just that you think the church should kind of quote unquote modernize, but areas in which you think there is real hope for progress? Sure. I don't know if it's about modernization so much as it is about transformation. We don't need a bringing up to date, or we need a bringing up to date, to take, borrow a, a phrase from the Second Vatican Council, but we need more than that. We need to look at the teachings and practices around economic justice and social justice that have served Catholics so well um, and lift those up, and we need to change those that aren't working. Those around um, banning women from the priesthood is just one example, but certainly those that condemn a homosexuality is another. There, there, it is interesting when you look just at the raw numbers of what's going on in the Catholic mm -hmm. Church after years and years, frankly, of the number of vocations going down. They seem to be slowly on the rise, even here in the United States. Mm -hmm. There are some surprising numbers, I think, uh, in the number of young people who are part of the Catholic Church or even joining the Catholic Church. And I'm sure people ask you the question, Kate, why would you be a member of this church that seems to be anti-women, anti-gay? I'm sure you get this question. Yeah. What do you say? I say that this church is as much my church as it is Pope Benedict's church. Um, this church is home for me. And I think that we see young Catholics and, and, and progressive Catholics, members of Call to Action, an organization I'm on the board of, that are building.